Hey, this is Lewis from Breakdance, and in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a contact form using Breakdance. The contact form will send you an email whenever a user submits it. So let's go into Breakdance. I already have my contact page designed. I just need to drop in a form here. So to do that, I'm going to add a form builder element. And by default, the form builder element is already set up as a contact form. So actually, you don't need to do anything here, and it's already going to work. You'll see on the left we have the form fields of name, email, and message. And if we scroll down, we'll see the form actions are set to email and store the submission. By default, the email is going to go to your uh, admin email address. So let's go ahead and save this page and take a look at it on the front end, and we'll submit the form. So I'll put in my name, my email address, and a test message. And let's submit that. And it says, your message has been received. Now, I'm not going to check my email in this video, but I will show you in the WordPress admin panel. If you go to Breakdance Form Submissions, then you'll be able to see the submitted form. You can click on it, and you'll see all the submitted form data, and you'll see the actions that ran when the form was submitted. In this case, email was done successfully, and you can open up the details to get any debugging information you might need. You also get additional information over here. Okay, now let's go in and set up a more custom form. So I'm going to clear out the actions entirely, and I'm going to clear out the form fields. Um, in fact, I'm just going to clear out the form entirely, and then I'm going to go ahead and add my own um, fields. So I want name to be present. The default label is name, that's a text field. I'm going to go to advanced, and I'm going to make that field required. I could also set a placeholder or set a value dynamically from the WordPress database. If I wanted, I can customize the width and I can display the field conditionally. I don't need to do any of that for this field though, so let's go on to the next field. Now I want the user's telephone number, so I'm going to choose phone number and I'll set the label to phone number. And this won't be required. I also want the user's email address, so I'm going to choose the email field, set the label to email and I want this to be required, so go to, I'll go to Advanced and Enable Required. And let's drag email address above phone number. And uh, now let's add a message field. So this field will be of type text. The label will be message. Actually, that's too small for a message. Let's choose a text area. And now we have our form. Now let's add in a, a radio field. So I'm going to choose radio. Uh, and the, the label is going to be um, fries with that. And the option is going to be yes, the value of yes. We're going to select that by default and no, which is not selected by default. Um, actually, let's leave yes off selected by default so I can show you the conditional fields. Um, then I'm going to add another field called um, size. And I'm going to make uh, this field a select field. And I'm going to add a size for small. If you don't set the values, the label will be used as a value, so you don't need to actually set values for all your fields. Um, medium and large. Now, we only want size to appear if the user chooses that they do want fries with that. So let's go into Advanced, Enable Conditional, and set it to display when field fries with that equals yes. And because it's a conditional field in the builder, it will appear, but it will be slightly opaque, so you can tell it's conditional. OK, now let's go ahead and save this and take a look on the front end and play with our form. So here we can fill in our form, our name, our email, our phone number, our message. And if I submit, you see that my email is invalid. Um, phone number is not required, so it'll submit without a phone number. If I choose fries with that, then I will get an option to choose the size. If I don't want fries, then I won't get to see the size. Now let's go ahead and set up an action that emails us all this information on submit. So I'll go to the properties panel for the form builder. I'll go to actions, and I will choose email. And then I will go to email, open the pop out, and I will add an email. You can email as many staff members as you want when the form is submitted. So I will add an email. Um, this will be the subject of the, the email. Call it new contact. Where are we going to send it? We're going to send it to my email 
Who's it going to be from? I'm going to make it from myself. And uh, the from name is going to be the name entered in the form. The reply to address will be the email address entered in the form. And the message defaults to all fields, and I'm just going to keep it that way. Although you could create a custom message using any of the uh, information set in the form. So that's all we need to do for the email. Um, now let's also store this submission in the WordPress admin panel. So for actions after submission, I will just choose store submission, and that's all we have to do. Now let's go ahead and take a look on the front end and submit the form. Name is um, Lewis Hungry. Email is my email at example.com. Phone number is not your business. Message is I'm hungry. Do I want fries with that? The answer is yes. How big of the fries? I want a large fries. Let's submit that. The form was submitted successfully. Let's go into the WordPress admin, breakdance form submissions, and as you can see, we have the submission. And here it is with all of our submitted data. Okay, this is Lewis from Breakdance, and thank you very much for watching.